A warm welcome to a pod for the Saints, number two for the 2023-24 season. We've had a little break during pre-season, so we could take in all the games, couldn't we, Jake? Um, <laughs> it's, it's myself here, uh, David Tavner, and we previously mentioned uh, Jake Ellicott. Hello, Dave. Hello, everyone. I can't believe the actual season's here already. How exciting. It is. Uh, I hope you can contain your excitement too. Lee Wood. Yes. Is it excitement? Is it wind? Who knows? Let's find out. How are you doing, boys? You OK? Well, we've got an extra boy again. We've got, we've got our, our token Geordie back again. Uh, from the Hearts advertiser, uh, Neil Metcalf. He, he's representing himself, not the newspaper, but uh, his, his, pay, his comments are going to be just as irrelevant either way. Uh, <laughs> Neil, lovely to see you this evening. <laughs> Start as we mean to go on. <laughs> right, we've got five games to look back on in theory, three season games. Um, I don't think... Uh, too many of you got to many of these games. Um, but from what you've picked up, have we learned anything from these games? Or is it just a case of getting some horrible phrase minutes into the legs of the players? I I think it was welcome in so much that Nobby's probably had time to recruit some better quality players over the past few weeks. When we spoke on, on the first pod, the squad was a bit up in the air. It didn't really have signs of real quality. But, you know, we've had some acquisitions over the course of the last week or, or sort of 10 days. And I feel I'm in a better place now, really. I'm a bit more confident in the squad that is assembled. So in terms of that aspect, certainly. Um, performances, listen, <laughs> we've, all, we've all watched enough games to know we can't really sort of take too much out of pre-season. It's all about building relationships and shape and tactics that way. But the, the, the thing is, though, Tabs, it was necessary. It's a necessary evil, if you like, from a, 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 a perfection point of view. But look, there's some good players there, some good performances, and um, signs are beginning to sort of show that we may be in for a good season. It, it was a short pre-season, wasn't it? With just those five games, uh, they went pretty much as you would expect. Uh, mm. Against the three higher clubs, we lost all three. The two lower clubs, we beat them. Hell, we won on Saturday with an absolutely dreadful performance. I do not know, but we got away with it. We'll take it. Um, what do you make of it so far, Jake? I, I think Lee's right. We only had six new signings last time we spoke. We've got 12 now, so the squad is looking stronger. Yeah, for me, I think when you mentioned that question or asked that question, for me, it was... It was bedding in these new players and Nobby having time on the pitch, but also on the training pitch, which I think you've seen with not a lot of games this summer, um, actually building this squad. And I think he hinted it in his last interview. It's been a lot more turnover than he expected. Come the end of last season, there's been a lot more changes. Some players that have gone that he didn't expect, but he's had time now. I think that, that less busy summer has allowed him to try out a few players, bring in a couple more that I think are quite exciting. Um, so, yeah, for me, this summer is, is you know, it's, a, it's very much a, a necessary evil, but it's been one of a lot of turnover and a lot of change, which I think a, a lot of Saints fans have been quite surprised by so far. You managed to get to the first game, Neil, against uh, Cambridge United. Unfortunately, Glenn McConnell couldn't play for them. He was injured. Um, as Jake said, there were a lot of turnover of players now. How does it compare to all the other clubs? Because... In your job at Hartshead, you cover so many clubs. Does this turnover, is it reflected in other clubs as well? Oh, I think it's a standard, isn't it? These days, especially in the, in the non-league game, it's very, very rare that you only make four or five signings. Um, it's, and I think, especially this is, the, you've got to remember, this is Nobby's first summer. Mm. He wanted to put a big stamp, he wanted to put his stamp on it. That was one thing that came through last season when I spoke to him. It wasn't really his team. This is his team that he'll get playing his way and he'll live, live or die by it. So he said it was hard. I know when I spoke to him after that game against Cambridge, he said, yeah, it's, it, it's been a lot more difficult than I thought it would be in terms of recruiting players and, and getting the right players. But he says, you know, it's, it's all a learning curve for him as well as in, in the management role. But it, it's he was happy with the way it was coming together. And obviously, like you say, it's, it's progressed since then. Well, what do we all make of the players that's come in? Um, very few forwards amongst these dozen signings. Um, nobody who shouts, I'm going to get a lot of goals in there. Um, Concern there or not? I think there is. I know that one of one of our friends, Jake, you know, he said, 
you know, we have got a goal scorer, but no, he doesn't quite fancy. He doesn't see how he's going to fit into the system. And I know this has been ongoing now for the good part of sort of six, seven months, the will he, won't he, Sean Jeffers saga. You know, the argument that, that our friend put forward to us is that, well, maybe Sean Jeffers should run more. Well, that's fine. That's a very simplistic view of it. But how about the rest of the team chipping with some more goals? And then we've got the answer there, haven't we? Um, this all can't land at Sean Jeffers' door. The, I, th- I think he's got the definition of forward has probably changed. And I think what you've seen over the last sort of few weeks is that Nobby has acquired some attacking uh, Arsenal to the, to the sort of squad. You look at Rizzullo, who for me has been a fantastic signing. Um, the Ebbs Fleet game in particular, who he was, you know, trialist A. I thought him in the middle of the park, he looked hungry, he wanted the ball. Of course, that's what he's going to do. He's trying to impress. That's what that is the name of the game. But I think he's subsequently shown real glimpses of talent and, and class. I think that the way, as Neil puts there, Nobby stamp on this game. He wants ball retention at this level. It's going to be absolute gold. And with him and Dunn and Wyatt and Blackman in the middle of the park, that is where our strength is going to be. So... If Jeffers doesn't play and we're relying on sort of forwards, just you know, forward players being more attack minded, then fine. But that's got to come to fruition. And we can't just keep relying on Mitch popping in with the odd sort of goal, putting him up front. Because we've seen at Dartford away last year, he was found wanting and he got found out relatively quickly. I'm hoping that with the acquisition that Nobby's made, um, we're going to be a bit more sort of... Uh, interactive in terms of the way these players are going to come into the game now and it's not all relying on just that one player Well with Mitchell Weiss you mentioned there, uh, five goals pre-season, all in the last two games uh, which is uh, highest since 2005 by a player pre-season without the aid of any penalties which sounds encouraging but we know once the season starts Mitch doesn't score frequently Um, great player but a great player with Sean Jeffers now it looks like Nobby's got no intention of renewing that partnership. So is the onus now on Mitch uh, to get a lot more goals this season? Because it, it, well, I bet if Ben Wyatt plays, he's capable of chipping some in, but he might be playing a more defensive role. I don't know. I, I, I think the, it, there's always been an onus on, on midfielders scoring more goals. That's always been, even from all the years I've covered them when Ian was there, he was always saying we need our midfielders to score 10, maybe even 15 goals a season. That's what his mantra was. And I think that's the, that's the same for Nobby. Nobby will want his midfielders to chip in with double figures, you know, at least, as well as the assists that he's going to give to the, to the out and out forwards in like Jeffers and Mitchell Vice. If he can get a couple of them midfielders forward more and score early, great, but it's it's... It's like you say, it's meshing it all together and I haven't seen enough. That first game, there was positives against Cambridge. But there was still lots and lots of things that were lacking. Sounds like it's progressed. The two wins, yes, against lower teams will do them the world of good. But only time will tell, won't it? Yeah, those two wins were very much welcome. And particularly the seven goals at Kings Langley. But they're a club... In a state of flux at the moment, I think it's fair to say. They're turning over players as they try and rebuild their club after relegation and uh, budget cuts and all sorts of things. So we did what you would expect to do, really, I think, that day, uh, which is nice. No, we can do it. Um, Saturday at Haringey Borough, we didn't play well. We got away with it. Two goalkeeping errors uh, helped us, really. But Mitch stuck one way, which is good. But second half, we hung on. Um, I don't know. I, I, I... it is a lack of goals that I think could be our undoing. Um, you're on about his midfielders chipping in goals. Didn't happen last season. Nobody else got into double figures after Sean. Um, nobody could have a headache pretty soon. Let's hope not. Um, I, I don't know. What, what do you make of it, Jake? Yeah, I, I agree with what the other guys have said. I mean, I suppose last season, Shea Cooper probably would have got double figures, wouldn't he, if he was here the whole campaign. Um, he was fairly successful, wasn't he? But yeah, it, it, it's, it's. I mean, we talked about this this summer has been a lot of turnover. I think we're going into the season with a few unknowns in terms of where the goals are going to come from. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a front three, whoever it is, that front three on Saturday against Weymouth, that is going to be very much interchanging 
ones going central, then left, then right, etc. Players that can play across that front three, which I think is what David Noble wants. And I think that could cause teams a lot of problems. But you need to get the ball into the area, first of all, and then have someone that can poke it away. And we saw with Sean Jeffers, didn't we, in the, in, even in the playoffs, you know, that goal against Chelmsford. We weren't scoring that evening until he managed to score that brilliant goal from, you know, a very tight angle. And he's a man who scored a lot of goals at this level. And I think the risk comes, doesn't it? If we start the season poorly or you know, we've got a tough run to start the season as well against teams that have really changed their squads a lot as well. If Sean Jeffers is on their bench, the pressure builds a lot, doesn't it? Because Sean Jeffers, he's, he's a star at St Albans City. He's loved by Saints fans, young and old, for what he's done for the club. And that pressure will build if those goals don't come from elsewhere. If they do, not a problem. But it just leaves David Noble that little bit of risk there, doesn't it? The one thing I quite liked... Sorry, I'm just, just going to sort of say, mate, the one thing I quite liked about pre-season, I'm not going to take too much out of the games with like Kings Langley because I'm pretty sure, Dave, in your day, mate, playing for Blackberry Jacks, you probably could have got a few goals against them in the heyday. But the thing is, you're looking at you're looking at the intent now of these new players who are coming in. And what I liked, particularly against Ebbsfleet, were they were willing to do something a bit different. They were looking to have that attacking pass in the final third, whereas maybe last year we were taking a touch too many and it sort of broke down in the end and it gave the oh, defenders a chance to sort of get in position a bit quicker. With the likes of Dunn and Wyatt and Blackman uh, and Rizzullo, they were looking for that, that pass. It wasn't a champagne pass, it was a calculated pass and it didn't always come off, but you can see it was causing Ebbsfleet one or two problems. And I think that interaction and that quartet is going to be key coming forward. Add on to that the fact we've got the likes of Banton and Smith and Vice and Jeffers waiting in the wings to sort of prove a point as and when he comes on. So it's not all doom and gloom. There's a lot of uncertainty. Of course, there always is at this time of, of, of year. But that will be riddled throughout every single club in this division. Even the big boys, you know, the pressure is different. It, it's all relative to, to the, the squad that you've got. Um, but what I'm saying to you is that it's not all doom and gloom. There are, some, there are some golden nuggets there to be taken going into the season. Yeah. Do, do you know much about our new signings, Neil? Not a vast Are you familiar with them? No, I mean, not a vast amount. I mean, obviously, Ben White, yes, um, which, which is a, a fabulous signing. If he can re recreate half the form he managed... In his first first spell, and um, that'll be that'll really like help make you forget almost to go to Farimo and Devontae Stanley. The rest of them, no. Um, I've, I've I've like you see, I, I've I've read the bits. I saw what a little bit. I saw of one or two of them. I mean, is it is it done in the middle middle of the park? It came from Dartford. I mean, yeah, he, only first... he only had three games for him now. Uh, and we talk about first impressions for him. The first one was he tried to. To foul someone and then 30 seconds later he did and that was <laughs> I like it I like it <laughs> it'll it fit well mate at Clowns Park it wasn't even an attempt to win the ball it was just I'm going to foul him no I've missed him this time let's get him again and I, I thought dear me son that's, that, that's, a, that's a funny one but he, he, did, he did show some signs that he's he is a ball player and can do things um, and I, I, I don't know the defence looked actually quite all right. I know they conceded three that day against Cambridge, but very different styles of centre-halves, but all added to the mix and didn't look too bad. So, like I say, there was plenty of positives to take from that first game, but I think the thing for me, and you've touched on it slightly, this start of the season, the fixture list has not been county in the start because if you struggle at Clarence Park like you did last year, and you don't beat Weymouth, then hello, you're, in, you're you're coming up against some of the big boys straight away, needing to get points. Otherwise, it could be four or five games down the line and struggling, you know. So, a well, big I, I, don't, I, I don't think the National League could have given us an easier start of the season. Two clubs that are relegated, so they're in uh, disarray. One club uh, that avoided uh, relegation on the last day of the season, so they're all over the shop. And the other one that fell apart. Uh, since Christmas and haven't got it together. Now, if there's not 12 points in the bag, I don't know what it is. I, I've who never is... known you so positive. Dear. I was going to say, who is this fella? What have you done with David Tavener? Bring him back. It's quite uh, unnerving, actually. 
<laughs> Taking a slightly different line, um, it, it's funny actually looking at Weymouth, they're, they're similar to us in some way. Their signings, there's nothing really that stands out. They got Josh McQuaid back, but um, there's like us, they're not named players, uh, some lower league ones, some ex football league, but some way back in the distance. Um, I don't expect too much from them. It's, just, it's a kiss of death, of course. Um, I think. If you wanted a home game to start the season, that's not a bad one to get. How about our team for the day? Should, should we have a look at it? What, what we think the eleven might be? Before you go with that, Tavs, I'm going to just mention some of the factors as well. I think Weymouth are going to be a bit tougher than we all expect, simply because, I mean, they were on their knees last season. They had problems all sorts, you know, and I think that Bobby Wilkinson's done a very good job in, in bringing some stability back into that team. But not only that, they're now debt free, you know. So the local businesses and, and supporters have have made that happen. You know, they're now debt free. That 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 burden is off their backs. The players are going to get paid. You know, this the little things are all equate and they all amass to like you know just that breath of fresh air. And they've got nothing to lose. And I think that they're they're they're, they're now a club that have been regenerated. And they you know. We've struggled at home in the past. I don't. I mean, I, I still think we're going to win. I think we've got enough. But I don't think it's going to be as easy as, as some of us think because Weymouth are going to come and play and, and, and they've got nothing to lose. You know, they're, they've got a resurgence now and uh, they're going to be looking forward rather than back. I don't think it'd be easy at all. Last season, we beat them 3 2 at home. They were unfortunate not to get a point out of that. Yeah. Down at their place, if Michael Johnson hadn't saved a penalty, we'd have lost that down there and Weymouth would have deservedly won over the 90 minutes. Um, they did win their last three games of last season, but of course, like us, they've changed their side a lot since then. Um, I, I agree, Gilly. It's not going to be easy, but I would fancy us to win. Uh, what about you, Jake? Do you share that optimism? And uh, we'll kick off with you as uh, starting the team for Saturday. What would you go for? Or at least one or two of them, anyway. I mean, for me, actually, to be honest, the defence is the hardest for me to pick because there's quite a lot of players there that we could pick. And also, there's players that could... Someone like Ben White, I wouldn't be shocked if he's ends up further forward in the team on Saturday. Whereas for me, Ben White is more naturally our first choice left back bombing on. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's pushed forward. So I'd like to see Dan Dan Bowery, Bowery, however we want to pronounce it from Worthing, probably start in the middle at the back there. I think Michael Johnson, as long as he's fit, he's starting in goal, isn't he? And then the fullbacks is is it's really hard for me. As I said, I would have Ben Wyatt, but then you're probably looking at Jack James and, and Brown, aren't you? So, and then midfield for me is Blackman, Smith, and then I would, I mean, again, I, I'd probably have Wyatt in midfield, to be honest. And then, I I mean, attacking-wise, Sean Jeffers, but in reality, I think it would be Mitchell Vice, Bobby Dunn, and maybe Zane Banton, probably as a team, generally. I think maybe that sort of shape. Um, but, you know, I share the... Cautious optimism about Saturday, but also, uh, you know, we've faced Bobby Wilkinson sides previously that have proven difficult, I think it's fair to say, and have caused us a lot of trouble. And I don't think you can underestimate him and what he's done there. And he's had a, a lot of lead time over the summer now. He made a lot of light signings very early on. And I think they could be really difficult to beat. T team I've gone for, but I, would, I wouldn't say this is a firm 11. Uh... Michael Johnson, uh, Jack Jones, Jones, James, um, Sam Brown, Joe Rasulu, Nathan Carlisle, or Michael Clark. Which one out of those two? Um, I would go for uh, Carlisle uh, based on what I saw against Cambridge. That's a one. Right. What, he looked as if he had something about him defensively. Clark or Bowery then? Was Clark fit? Is Clark even fit? Um, well, he's, usually, start, he's usually injured by now, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> he didn't take part on Saturday. Sorry, Clarky. <laughs> uh, others, uh, Ben Smith or Ben Wyatt, uh, Blackman, we done, not sure, and started the last two games, and Zane Banton. That's probably nearer to the mark, Tavs. Um, interesting, you know, we had this question on our chat, Jake, you know, who, especially in terms of defence, and there's 
there's quite there's rich pickings there, isn't there? Um, the Silver's name came up a few times. The one thing, the very little that I've seen of him, I think he still needs time to bed in a little bit. I mean, he's an absolute beast, but I thought he looked, I, I thought he looked worried against genuine pace um, against Ebb's fleet, um, which is a concern. But that will just come with time, you know. That's what pre-season is all about. Um, to get yourself up to the match fitness for when you start the season. Wyatt, yeah, I mean, if you cast your mind back, Ben Wyatt played more on the left-hand side of midfield when he was here the first time around. And he won player of the month for the first, I think, three months. Um, but when he went to Sutton, it was, you know, he was like a left back, a left wing back, which probably says his, his quality when he played that position for three months and did as well as what he did. But I think what, what you've seen here, you've all those players the versatility of, of them all, you know, you probably, I mean, I think that's what Noble, Noble, again, Noble, I think that's what he wants is a versatility with all the squad across the back line um, because there's good, it's a long old season and as you touched upon it there, fellas, you know, we've got to make a winning start because it's not going to get any easier in the first month. So, long season, uh, I think Tavshi probably got it right but I don't know whether he starts, Sean. Um, I think, it was evident in the teams that he's picked in pre-season. That's probably not going to be the case. I couldn't agree more. I can't see him playing Sean. And if he doesn't play him alongside Mitchell Reese, then um, no point anyway, because um, he works so well with him. Uh, I think is our best attacking option. Um, oh, you, uh, you mentioned speed in there, Lee, which is a good point. Uh, Haring had a player called Taj or Tage Kennedy, only a little bloke out in the left wing. My goodness, he skinned us twice in the first half and gave us problems all through the game. So you do wonder how we are going to cope when we come up against genuine speed, which we will do, of course, during the season. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, But then I think we've got players like that as well that could pose a risk to other teams. So, yeah, I think like Lee, Lee just said, I think what's interesting is there's a lot of players in the squad. I mean, think, you know, on Saturday, there'll be players on the bench that I think will surprise some supporters, not just the obvious one with Sean Jeffers. I think there'll be some players on the bench supporters don't expect or maybe think should be starting. But also, again, you've got players like Rasulo, who I didn't even mention in my team. I've completely forgotten about him. He'd scored 13 goals for last season for Banbury. You know, Banbury fans are raving about him as one of the best players they've ever seen play for their club. And he could play central midfield. He could be one of the wide attacking players. He could be behind the forward. There's so many players in this team this season that could play almost anywhere. I think at times on Saturday, we will see the shape change and the team change. And it will be a very fluid formation on Saturday. And players switching positions throughout the team, I wouldn't be surprised by. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see Nobby start with his 11 he was going to go with against Weymouth. For the last two games, at least give them a half each altogether. But uh, I don't think he did that. Look at those two lineups he put out for those two games. Um, I just think settling down that, that would have been a good way to go. I don't, I don't know what you lot think. I mean, probably yeah. But they're so often managers don't do that anymore, do they? They think, oh, I don't, I don't want the opposition to think who I'm going to play. I don't want to worry about that. You know, I just, you know, and also again, you've got fitness, etc., haven't you? So. I don't think it's too massive a concern. I think the main thing Nobby spoke about it this summer is getting them ready on the training pitch and getting their shape ready on there. It's not match conditions, but I think that's that's what he's prioritised. I don't even think... That, yes. yeah, that's what he said after the Cambridge game. I said, you know, you've only got five friendlies. That's completely different to what Ian always did. It was always like 10 or 11, you know, when Ian was in charge. And he says, yeah. no, that's deliberate. He says, I want to get them on the training pitch. I want more time with them to practice what I want to get them to do. He says the games are more or less just to get match fitness. That's that's that, you know. But um, if, he's, and if he has had that time to work with them and they can't interchange, they're going to cause teams problems. Well, we hope so. <laughs> no point going if we don't. <laughs> um, oh, I was going to ask you a question there, Neil, but it's gone out of my head, so it probably wasn't interesting anyway. But, uh, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, the uh, well, well, I know, I know you lot haven't seen many games. Uh, you can get rid of that M when we talk to you, Jake, obviously. Um, but uh, when we spoke in the other pod pre-season, I think we all pretty much agreed probably mid-table is where we're looking at this season. Uh, anything 
make you change your mind over the last few weeks? Signings? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Lee's probably yeah. gonna say it, but I think there's a couple of signings we've made have filled me with a bit more confidence. Rasulo and Ben Wyatt, especially both of those look like not necessarily coups, but very good signings. Um, but I think the real unknown for me this season is how everyone else in the league is going to get on. There's so many teams that have changed their teams totally. Uh, I just I don't know. It could be a really tough division this year. And I think that could be more of deciding of how, where we're going to end up just because of the quality of opposition. Yeah, I'm not going to change where I think we'll finish. I think it's still a mid a mid table for us, but I, I think it's going to be improved in terms of the way we play our football. I think we're better equipped to be more competitive against the bigger boys with the likes of Wyatt and Sulo, et cetera, uh, coming on board. Um, I think that we've just got to give these guys time. You know, the cream will always rise to the top and you expect the normal contenders to be there or thereabouts come April. Um, but the thing is, you know, everyone's starting cold on Saturday, aren't they? Everyone's starting cold. So we'll get a winner against Weymouth. We can go into the likes of Haven and, OK, Torquay, they've got to be one of the favourites. But ultimately, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unknown quantity for us and it's an unknown quantity for them. So I think we're going to be extremely competitive and I think we're going to be hard to beat. But I can't see us getting any further than the dim table, really. We didn't have you on here last time we discussed this, uh, Neil. Um, what can you see for the club in the months ahead? To be honest, I'm like I'm like the rest of you. Um, I'm not expecting anything different to what we've seen for the last few years, which is basically a top half finish and a tilt at the playoffs. Which I'll either be so you know, who knows if it'll be successful. And I think the big key for me is is how Nobby plays the loan market. Now I know you're not keen on it, Dave, but it is. No. It's, it is. What, what on earth told you that? <laughs> But the thing is, it's it, it's the way the modern game is going. Like you, you get these kids who are coming in, and if you get them right, like you did with Cooper and McConnell last year, they can add a real boost. They can add suddenly ten goals from out of Norway, which gains you six, seven, eight points out of Norway, and that makes the difference between a ninth, tenth place finish and a fifth, sixth, or seventh. So I mean, it, th that's not going to come though until after the transfer window and potentially not to work till the very end of the season until till January and beyond. Um I don't I, I think like the rest of you it's completely up in the air. Everyone you, you don't know you expect Torquay to be up there. You expect you to be up there. Whether they will or not, you know it's who knows. I mean I think they'll potentially struggle. Tom didn't Torquay when they went up the last time start really slowly and then came with a charge when once they got the, the head round it. This is these are the things which uh, makes it fun at this point of this the year. But you know, it's still all unknown. Yeah, looking at that start, I know I said earlier about 12 points in the bag, but um it is pretty tough, isn't it? It's, it's Yeovil, uh, yeah, Yeovil the following Saturday, haven't a Waterlooville on the Wednesday, then Torquay at home on the Saturday, and then Taunton away. Well, the second half of last season, they weren't good at home, but first half they were. And then we've got uh, Bath, Welling, have got new management. It really is. It shows what a tough league it looks like being this season. And uh, if we don't get off to a good start against Weymouth, um, we could have some catching up to do straight away. So we've got to go into it, be positive and get that win. Well, the alternative is, obviously, if you win it, then you're on a then you're going to the mm. likes of you know, Torquay and Yeovil, who might struggle early on, like last time. And if you suddenly get wins or points against them, then the confidence that that generates in the team and on the terraces could suck two points, three points extra in the next few games. So you, it could work in your favour a win, but it's you know it's, it's arguably the biggest game. <laughs> the Weymouth game is the biggest one you're going to have for the, for August. That's a good way of looking at it. I, th I think that win is hugely important on Saturday. Um, when was it? About 2005-06, we lost only two games and ended up getting promoted. <laughs> we might have to do it again this season. Um, 
Right. And what else we got? Anything else we want to chuck in? This is this Dave. is going well. Um, yeah. So I, just a quick quick word. I went down to um, Clarence Park on Sunday to watch the first women's game at uh, at the venue. Um, I was quite impressed, to be honest. Um, obviously, it's it made for some good viewing. The weather was an absolute bastard, so I think that sort of put put a few people off. Um, one thing I would say, obviously, the ladies' team um, were formerly Coney Heath ladies' team, and we've just sort of like we've re, we've remerged them and we remarketed them all. But I thought that gave us a good platform because obviously all the girls have played together already. It was a really good at- atmosphere, despite the fact there's only a couple of hundred in the ground. And, and the football was decent, Tabs. It, it really, really was. And, you know, it was just a different crowd down there. I took my girls down there. Um, they had a great time, you know. And I think this women's team is going to be a vitally important and much welcome uh, aspect to the club overall. And... Um, I wish it every success. And I think if the weather wasn't so bad, I thought we would have definitely got somewhere near the 400 that, 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 that the club claimed were there in the first place. Um, but it was really, really good. Good focus, good intent, good football, good vibes all around. And uh, yeah, I look forward to watching some more games down there. Will you be taking in the B team this season as well, Lee, when the first team's away or whatever? If I can, yeah, I went down to, I went down to two games last year. Um, but the, the thing is, for me, is that, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm, I'm watching the first team. Um, if there's a free midweek, then I will try and get down there. But the thing is, this is it now, though, isn't it? There's so many different types of football on offer for the people to watch. So it's it's really good. It's a good introduction for for those supporters or those uh, residents of St Albans who wouldn't normally come and watch us. There were people down there who have said on social media they were, they were down there for the first time on Sunday. There was a, a very heavy sort of uh, female presence on the terraces, as you would expect. But you know what? It was really good. And there's lots of positives. And there wasn't any of this sort of like silliness, uh, sort of comments, dated comments about women's football that you might have heard a few years ago. Everyone there who went was really positive about it. And I think it is going to hold hold the club in good light. Will you be going to all Jake this season and to the B team as well? Uh, definitely to the women's games because they're often on Sundays, aren't they? I think actually the whole yeah. season's on Sundays. So I'll definitely try and pop down for a few. And as Lee says, I think it's it's really, really good. The team look good. And they've got, who I think, who will be a very good coach slash manager in some Sam Mardle, who's mm. been part of this club and the youth set up for many, many years. I think he's quite an important figure in sort of local youth football previously. I think he's going to do a great job with the women's team. Mm. Um, the B team, it's difficult because we're not normally we're at the away games, aren't we? Um, so maybe maybe less so the B team. Interestingly, the B team haven't really had much coverage over the summer, have they? Sort of not much of a mention. So be interesting to see how they get on. There's been a lot of changes for them over the last year and a half, two years. Hopefully they keep plugging on, keep producing products and allowing players to progress through, like Ben Smith, I think has been a really good, again, product of, of the B team and the reserve squad. So, but yeah, like Lisa, it's almost too much football these days. I can't fit it all in. No, there's no such thing. Neil, I've got a question, <laughs> mate, for you. Do you what? think, now the fact that, that the director of football has has moved on to Pastures New, there was a very heavy emphasis this time last year on promoting from within and all these talented youth and using the, the B team platform to do that. Now that hasn't, sort of materialised, do you think there's still a need for Nobby to look a bit lower within his own ranks to sort of get the players he needs? I think... I don't think it harms having that B yeah. team there. Um, I mean, they play at such a level that you're not paying them or it'll be, you know, it'll be buttons that you're, that you're paying them. So, cost-wise, the cost-wise comes from the ground and, and the, you know, the electricity for the lights and that's where the cost thing comes from. From a playing point of view, though, Having these kids available, I mean, I think the only one that looks like he might try and break through this year is Gautier at the back. Mm. He's He looks to be the one, but there's one or two others, I think, who were around for the Cambridge game who I hadn't heard of, but were there and are learning. And if you do, the point is with a B team or a reserves, I call it what you want, is about trying to find on earth this star, isn't it? who might come in and do a little bit for you and then head off 
to pastures new and make a bit of cash for the club. If, if it's interesting, if, Neil. You're right. As um, some of the B team players last year were knocking on the first team door in the County Cup games, uh, predominantly. Um, no real sign of this year. George Morrell's gone out on loan to Cheshunt, which won't do him any harm. You wouldn't have thought if you can get a game or two there. Um, but there don't seem to be any others knocking on the door at the moment. It seems to be that generation that was, you know, the Lancashire's and the Dawson's that came through. That's now moved on. That's now 1920 and heading away. So you're waiting for this next slot. Who would? It's not like in a league club where you've got sort of second year scholars and first year scholars. You've yeah. basically got a team. And then they ship out and then in come the next lot and you, you get two years with them to lift them up to upper level. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't expect too many to come through into the first team, but you have got, as well as the Senior Cup this year, the County Cup, you've got the Charity Cup back. So there's a game there for them to learn. If they do need to go out on loan, it won't harm them to get that bit senior football, it, it, like a step three or a step four club. So, yeah, I've got no problems with keeping them around. I think the one problem that I could see happening this year for you is with three teams, how's the pitch going to hold up? Which, you know, everyone always says, oh, St Albans has got the, one of the best pitches in non-league. Well, that might have been the case a few years ago, but they've been fighting the battle against it for the last couple of years with sort of... I tell you what, Kingsland so, pitched in half look good, Neil. <laughs> that really did. <laughs> so if they got well, nothing yeah. else right this season, they got that going right. Yeah. I mean, if you, well, if if you look at last season. But yeah, you know, you've it's... got three games, three teams playing on a week in, week out, so two, at least two matches a week or every other week. Um, and it gets a bit wet around November, December, which we know it does. Just it's like wet in that, June, mate. Uh, it's wet in June, yeah. July, and August, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I've got no problem, but you want your like your silky football, I just like to slide in and tackle people. So I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. <laughs> Hit them where it hurts. Well, here's an oddball one for you. Um, have you got any hopes for the season on a wider level? What I mean by this is football, most football not nowadays is not that exciting because it's all about keeping possession get a goal as, as a bonus. Um, I'd like to see football adopt the England cricket team, their attitude. A year ago, up until when Joe Root was still captain and they had the backroom staff, and they went out there with intention, trying not to lose, which is how a lot of football is set up these days now. Now, the England cricket team, they go out to win games. We don't want to go quite as gung-ho as they do, because it doesn't always work. Um, but I would like to see football adopt that attitude again. Go out there with the intention of trying to win games more than just trying to get a point and make sure we don't lose. Well, I think that's, that's always got to be the case, hasn't it? You know, you should, that's the way you should be playing the game. Um, it's not know, true, like, though, is it? it well, it's, it's don't lose half the time is, is the mantra. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I could all agree with that. If, if Keegan, the Newcastle, I always remember Keegan was kind of like, you know, let's win 5-4 rather than one out. It was... We'll have Pavel Serna check the goal and ten up front. That's that's the way he wants to play it. And now again, you don't want to go that way, but you want to be known as a bit of an entertaining team because that attracts other people to you, whether it be mm. players or supporters. If you're like in the games with loads of goals or with nice passing football, you're gonna get people going, hang on, what they're doing over there. And it just it puts you on the map, even if you're not winning them all, it puts you on the map and then you might be able to attract one or two, which makes you better. I don't think we're a million no. miles away, boys, to be fair, because the, the fact is look, the players that Nobby has got, you know, they're not bowlers, you know, they're not world beaters, but they're good. They're good footballers for this level. And a few of them could probably, you know, chance to run at a level above. If Jordan McKenna can sort of do it, then, you know, the large part of his squad can. But what I'm saying is that Teams like us, we're going to be competitive, and we and we are going to we're going to ruffle a few feathers along the way. But we're going to win fourteen games. We're going to lose fourteen games. It's what you do with the, with the other fourteen games is going to be the main thing. It's going to decide whether we're going to be um, sort of you know the higher echelon sort of chasing that playoff berth, or whether we're just sort of quite content with not content, but whether we are going to find ourselves in a mid table 
uh, thing. We had a question, Jake, didn't we, from from one of our, our Norwegian branches? You know, they um, Kingy basically he he wanted to know whether we had any thoughts on why our pitch seems to get narrower and narrower uh, every single season. It doesn't really promote expansive, you know, free flowing football like you're after their tabs. But the thing is, I did a a press day with um, some managers in uh, Skybet League One last week and I managed to sit down with with one manager in particular and just, just to get a preview of of his season and the style of play and we and we got onto the topic about 442 and how no one ever plays 442 now because the pitches you know and, but the thing is the one thing he said to me and admittedly this isn't you know this doesn't relate to every single club it's the fact that there's so much pressure now um, not to lose games. Everyone wants it quite compact. And whilst, yes, we can promote time on the ball and skill on the ball, if you pay 4 4 2, you're quite expansive and it leaves gaps. And teams that with better quality players, that's going to pick holes, pick holes in you all day long. I think the fact that in terms of City, if you look at the sort of wingers we've had in, in the past, Jimmy Wing, uh, Matt Han, you know, uh, Scott Oakes, etc. Good, good wingers, genuine God's honest wingers who who can take on. And no one, you know, everyone wants to see that, don't they? It's 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 the old days where, you know, Neil, I'm sure back you know, in Keegan's time, if you think of Gillespie, okay. etc. You know, genuine wingers. But I think the fact is, the matter is, we can't do that now because half of our touchline is half grass, half bar. So the fact of the matter is you're never going to re- get that back. So there's too much emphasis on, on, on wingers and expansive football, but ultimately it's results at the end of the day, Tabs, that, that is going to get, it's going to get Nobby where he needs to be. I mean, it's not going to please everybody, um, is it? But, but the thing is, the, the gung-ho thing, the gung-ho vibe, that has its limitations. That has its limits. And it's all well, well and good when, you know, it goes well. But when it goes badly, it can go horrendously badly. And you've only got to look at the season under Alan Cochran. It was gung-ho. It was, it was the Alamo, all attack or nothing. And we were on the wrong end of some, some pretty big scorelines, mate. And I don't think that uh, that sort of football translates to this day and age. We're on the right end of a lot of the good ones as well. We, we were. Ended up in top we were. Six, in top six or seven, because there was no playoffs back then. And... Uh, was it 177 goals that season, all told? Um, just just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Jimmy King. I, I was writing something the other day, and um, Kingy came out, and I looked into it, and um, I was looking at his time at Wivenhoe, and they didn't rate him that highly. They thought he wasn't a great success there. And, of course, he comes to us. He's an absolute god, wasn't he? And, and I remember, actually, you know, going slightly off topic completely. Not slightly, completely. Um, <laughs> we played a couple of games out in France in 92, and uh, Pete Taylor, sadly, no longer with us. And, and I were talking to Jimmy before the game against Fraser uh, the day before. And Jimmy says, yeah, we, uh, we'd already played one game against the local side. And they were niggly, and very sly in what they were doing. He says, you've got to watch out for it. Don't get involved. Just walk away from it. Just play our game. Don't get involved in it. Anyway, seven minutes into the game, Jimmy kicked somebody up in the air. He never kicked anybody in his life. And after that, the game just went one way. And the referee blew, I think it was seven minutes early in the end. Had <laughs> oh, a good old days, go. Tabs, were they? Yeah, they were, weren't they? You mentioned another former Saint there, Alan Cochran. I think we should mention Alan, who's done some brilliant um, community stuff. As he mentioned in a, you know, a plug on the podcast we did with him about a year and a half now, you can find on this on this feed on YouTube. But there's a new, new uh, documentary out about the work he's doing at Brentford FC and with Brentford Penguins. A brilliant team he's put together, a brilliant effort. I know he's on the one show that which I'm sure some Saints fans saw, but I think we just need to congratulate Alan for the work he's doing. It's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely. Well done, Alan. Mm. And he would happily come back here, I think, sometime this season if we uh, we have a gap. Mm. Indeed. Right. Shall we have some predictions? Oh, no. I thought we got rid of that tax. No, no, no. Jake loves making a fool of himself. He's going to go 2-1 anyway. Come on, Jacob. Uh, Put him wrong, mate. Uh, uh, let's go. 3 0 Saints. Steady on, son. I like a drink as much as the next boy, but 3 0. <laughs> 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 
Um, mm. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two 0 I'm gonna go two 0 You know, I think we gave a little bit too much on the opening day. They're gonna huff and puff, but I think ultimately we've got some good players there, and it's their turn to shine on Saturday. Well, we did this with you last time you were on, Neil. It was before the playoffs, and you and I thought it was going to be open stuff. Goals are plenty. Oh, it turned out we, ba- we barely had a shot in the three games. Um, <laughs> so I don't think you'll be going uh, six all or whatever this time. No, no. Uh, what do you fancy for Saturday? One's each. One, one. I can oh, that's what I was going to go for. KG. Okay. And sort of neither, eventually neither team will, will pull back from the table and settle for the points. So. Have we all agreed Sean, Sean isn't going to start? Uh, I, I can't right. see it. I can't see it. <laughs> there we go. We've got to have this conversation every single week for the next <laughs> eight months, aren't we, fellas? <laughs> um, oh, oh, dear. Yeah. Oh. One thing I will say is uh, thank you to Sam and to uh, Al, who uh, we had, I had a really good chat with at the women's game on, on Sunday. Big fan of the pod. Thank you very much for, for coming up and saying hello. Uh, Mrs. Wood was like, what is going on here? You know, <laughs> people coming up, um, wishing their best. But for this season, it's all about, this is your podcast. It's podcast of the, of the fans. So anything you'd like us to talk about, anything you'd, you'd, like, you'd like us to see on the podcast, email us in, you know, Twitter. Jacob's going to give you all the information now. Make it all about you. Make it about the team and we are going to try and make things bigger and better than ever. Yeah. Whether you're from St Albans, Norway or America, uh, send us your tweets and your thoughts and feelings. And I think, as always, thank you all very much for watching. I think everyone, we had brilliant viewing figures on the last one, considering there was no football to talk about. So we really appreciate all your support. Um, and we can't wait for another season of a pod full of saints, which I'm sure everyone's going to really enjoy. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right, many thanks to you, Neil, for coming on. Uh, you might as well oh. just put a ma- mannequin up there next to you, next time we get you on that can talk, because we still can't see your face. And we're, we're not complaining. Jesus, please don't do that again, Neil. The love no, of God, man. No. <laughs> right um if all goes well we actually have a guest booked in for next week but we might have to miss uh, change the day which could change things but we're hopefully going to have a special guest on next week and try and do a, a normal show as well reflecting on uh, the weymouth game but uh thanks for watching thanks very much everyone okay. we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.